I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my everyday life living in Latin America. Today, I'm actually not in Latin America. I'm here in the Biltmore Best Western in Belize City, Belize, which is part of Central America, but not part of Latin America. Today, I'm going to be talking about a little bit of what has updated since I lived in Panama City nine years ago. We're going to take you along on a bit of my journey and talk about what it was like getting from Nicaragua to Belize because I had to come on a holiday week and it is a bit crazy. So I've been traveling just like nuts over the last 48 hours to get here and I'm finally in the hotel. I'm going to be here. I'm hoping uh, to have a chance to film for you guys while we're here in Belize and actually get you some more Belize content. However, my foot is in a lot of pain. I have, I believe, tendonitis. I know it feels like just one medical thing after another these days, which is why I may just go walk on it anyway. Like, we got to get this done. Uh, but happy to be here in Belize. And uh, we're going to take you. We got some good footage, I think, in Panama. We're going to get some good footage here. We're going to show the hotel. We got a lot of stuff we're going to cover. So let's get to all that right after the bump. We're starting off in Managua. This is the best Western Las Mercedes right across from the airport that I talk about pretty often that I recommend this for people who are going to be staying at the airport. So this is uh, just showing the rooms. These rooms are really interesting. They're like cabana style rooms uh, in, in like a little village attached to the hotel. It's really hard to explain. At some point I'm gonna be there I don't have no idea when, but I'm going to try to get some videos of the outside sometime when I'm there during daytime so you can see what I mean. But there are these really cute kind of cabana rooms um, and right across the street from the airport. So I just wanted to share this with you guys because we do talk about it and let you know what my room was like. And uh, this was $84, uh, included breakfast, uh, even super early in the morning that they packaged up for me and sent me on my way to the airport. And we are in Costco Antigua or Costco Viejo here in Panama City. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my travels and all that later. But before that, we're going to talk about this part of Panama. So this is the tourist section, the old part that is still standing of Panama City here in Panama. And this is a beautiful area full of restaurants and bars and activities and so much to do and so many tourists. And of course, land and, and property here is crazy expensive, uh, but this is uh, just a beautiful zone. Now, um, when I lived in Panama nine years ago, uh, Casco Viejo was, uh, for the most part, in pretty rough repair. It was nothing like it is today. It was still the tourist center. Uh, and so this part that we're showing right here, great example, all brand new, new roads, new buildings, new facades. It is gorgeous. There's so many new shops, so many new restaurants popping up. Uh, it's If you've been to Panama five years ago, this is quite changed. There's a lot new to see. Um, and it feels like it's a lot safer than it used to be. This used to be a rough neighborhood uh, and now it does not feel that way whatsoever. So quite, quite a different place. If you're gonna be in Panama City, if you're looking at like tour guides or anything, they're definitely gonna talk about this heavily. But if you're picturing going to Panama City, it's easy not to be really aware of this zone and, and kind of miss it because it's not what people show when you're, you're like showing pictures of Panama City. We think of the, the big high rises downtown and the waterfront. And this is on a little peninsula. So there's a, there's a ton of ocean. We're in a very small area to walk around. But uh, because people generally picture Panama City being so modern and so, uh, you know, urbane and, and densely populated, uh, we don't think about these old historic areas of the city uh, generally being uh, very accessible. But there, and you can see people taking tours all over the place, walking tours of this region. So we came out, uh, I met up with Maggie, who worked for me for a long time. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, and we went and had brunch. Uh, in Costco Viejo, uh, and uh, then we did a little walking around to get you guys some footage, and we're going to do a drive around uh, this side of Panama City a bit, so you can see a view of of more stuff as we do that. So there she is showing us some of the streets, and uh, we had a nice walk, and the weather was really beautiful, and uh, we got really lucky that the rain held off uh, on this particular trip because, uh, like Nicaragua, it has been raining all week in Panama, so we were expecting to be rained out, and my weather guide said we were going to be rained out, and we were very, very lucky. It was a beautiful day, not too warm, uh, and that's Scott's Pots. I had to just, obviously, get that for you. All right, I am here in Costco Viejo in Panama City, and I'm here with Maggie, who I've been trying to get on this show 
for like five years since the show existed. Yeah. I've been trying to get Maggie to do the show and I haven't actually seen her in person in eight years since I used to live in Panama in 12. I lived in Panama in 2015. Coming you were in the United States with me in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the last time we saw each other. And we are out. I have this 10 hour layover here in Panama. I'm on my way to Costa Rica in a, in a few hours and then Guatemala tonight. And so we are out getting brunch in Casco Viejo. This is the tourist center of Panama City. Yes. And uh, we are exploring on foot, doing some filming. It is a gorgeous day. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of travel, but early travel to here went well. No problems on my flights. It's only 90 minutes to get here from Nicaragua, from, from Managua. And so pretty easy to get into Panama if you're in the area and explore. And if you're Nicaraguan, you don't have to have a visa to come to Panama, which is handy if you're traveling with Nicaraguans. So we're going to head around Casco Viejo and see a little bit more for you guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some more walking around and just I wanted to get a good a bit of uh, shots of just how beautiful this part of the city is. You got to come like this is a highlight of Panama seeing seeing this in the canal and downtown um, really are. And, and, and of course, uh, the museums, so many great museums. I think in Panama, very much a strong suit and interesting museums, different things than you get in a lot of other countries uh, in the region. So that's that's a nice change of pace. So many things are a nice change of pace in Panama. Panama being now for many years the richest country in Latin America, it really has uh, developed a lot of uh, kind of unique culture within the region. And so it is, uh, it is well worth a trip. A lot of people ask me if it's worth coming to Panama and uh, absolutely, it's such a unique place to visit such a uh, different part of Latin America. So we jumped in the car and uh, we're going to show you a bunch of shots. Uh, this is not too far from Casco Viejo. We're, we're in that uh, old part of the city, but with just fantastic views of uh, downtown. And we're going to take the the ring highway that goes out into the ocean. So this is really cool. So when we moved to Panama in 2015, they had just built this. It was brand new. And this is this giant highway uh, that goes out around. That's Casco Viejo there. That's actually the peninsula that we're looking at. Now this is low tide so that you'll see very little water. But when the, when the tide comes in, that's all ocean in there and under this bridge. And there's some water in there now. And they didn't want traffic to cut through this historic part of the city, but they really needed to deal with something because uh, there's so much traffic in this area. And so they decided that the, the answer was to build this highway completely out into the ocean. So you can see how far we are. They wanted to leave Casco Viejo as, as pristine as possible. And so they built this beautiful highway with, that has walking and hiking and biking paths and it basically a long linear park that goes all the way around you can see how how large this this space is and uh it's a beautiful highway and you can see casco viejo from every angle and you can see the ocean from there uh, on the other side and uh, it also acts as a uh, barrier for the sea to casco viejo to help protect it and preserve it in that way as well so really cool stuff and that was new 10 years ago and they've done new upgrades and added new parts to it and everything since then so so pretty pretty cool panama is one of the the best tourist destinations i think in the region just because it's so different than everywhere else uh, you're going to get that blending of central america and south america far more south america than central uh, culture but uh, physical um, landscape more like central america and certainly a blending throughout the country it is a cool country with a lot to offer and for my potential expat audience there's a lot of things that push people uh, to panama as well one being people looking for for big cities people looking for um, really heavy uh, infrastructure and uh, those kinds of things and especially people who are looking for citizenship panama has uh, some of the better options in the region and you can see that skyline just fantastic there's there's very little uh in latin america that that rivals the pan the pan american i'm sorry the the panama city skyline uh it's just it's it's something and when you get and you often do 
really strong weather in this area uh, rolling in over the city. It's, it's such a dynamic uh, view from bright sun to dark clouds and, and the mixture. When we were flying in even today, because Panama City faces south, which throws people off, they often think it faces east it uh, or, or, <laughs> or west. I don't even know what people think, but it faces due south. And so um, you'll, you'll get sun on downtown all throughout the day uh, because you get east exposure in the morning, west exposure in the evening, and always just the tiniest bit of southern exposure because we are north of the equator. And uh, when storms roll in, you get like a dark background with this brightly lit city. The city just glows alabaster. It's, it's amazing. And uh, so we're, we're taking you around uh, kind of west of Costco Viejo to new parts of the city. A lot of this has been developed since I lived there nine years ago and uh, heading out towards the causeway. Uh, so we'll get to see some of that. There's some really cool stuff out there. It's a lot of new construction, tons of new things. And this highway that we're on here is new since I was living there as well. So, uh, and in the distance, you can see the Puente de las Americas, the bridge of the Americas that is going over the Panama Canal. It's right in the middle of the screen out there in the distance. One of the coolest things, you have to drive across that, of course, and go over top of the canal. Uh, often considered the point that separates Central from South America. Not always, but at least spiritually, for sure. It also separates the hinterland from Panama City proper. Uh, so <clears throat> as we're driving around and looking at this, I'll let you enjoy these absolutely phenomenally gorgeous views. And this uh, just this big building here is a music venue. So a lot of people go and see concerts there. Uh, we are later going to see the brand new convention center, which is pretty impressive. Uh, but to talk about my trip and how this went, because I'm recording this audio in Belize City. I've made it. Uh, and uh, uh, it's been it's been quite a couple days. So to fill you in on exactly how it all went, uh, like we showed uh, the hotel in Managua, I got up at uh, 3.30 in the morning, was out the door at 4 o'clock. The hotel made me a quick breakfast to take with me. Very nice of them. Uh, took the shuttle right across the street to the airport where the air conditioning is broken. It has been broken for a couple weeks. Uh, some of my viewers uh, from at least the last couple weeks uh, have confirmed that it was not working. Alan was there a few days ago and said it wasn't working, so I was not surprised. Uh, they do have swamp coolers in there, but they do not keep up. It is pretty warm. It's not unbearable, but it is pretty warm for sure. Uh, now, it was a relatively cool day, so if it had been a hot day in the middle of the day, that would have been really bad. But this is early in the morning, and it's been a cool streak, so it uh, was not nearly as bad as it could have been. Uh, that's I had to grab a shot there. That is a restaurant that Dominica and I went and ate at uh, with the kids there in Panama City nine years ago on the causeway. Um, I love the causeway. It's got such such beautiful things and, and history and the uh, Bio, Bio Museo, which I highly recommend. Which This is the entrance right there. You can kind of see the sign. Um, it is a beautiful architectural piece and a neat museum. Uh, definitely, especially if you have kids, it's a great place to go. It is the museum uh, that talks about the biodiversity of the two continents or the two continental regions, depending on where you're from, and uh, talks about how Panama is the choke point keeping disease and other things from spreading between the continents. It's, it's really cool. Very well done. Uh, at least when we were there, it was new uh, when we lived there. Uh, so my flight, everything went fine, left at 6 o'clock in the morning, was very glad for once to be on a flight because it had lots of air conditioning, unlike the airport. Uh, the flight to Panama took about 90 minutes, so I just flew right up, landed in Panama, uh, went through border control, which is super easy in Panama, uh, and uh, popped out, waited outside for a little bit, and Maggie pulled up and picked me up at the airport. And uh, we went into Costco Viejo, where we showed you, and went out for brunch, got some light food and then did the walking around that we showed you and then are doing this drive right now. So I was uh, there doing this for just a couple hours and then uh, she took me back to the airport. Uh, I had a total of a 10 hour layover, which is a lot. That is a really long layover. So I was really thankful that we got to get out of the airport and hang out. And it was just awesome getting to see her because uh, we haven't hung out, like I said, in eight years uh, since she was in the United States for a conference uh, in 2016. And uh, so we got a few weeks. We went to Niagara Falls and did uh, the Erie Canal tours and, and some cool stuff in upstate New York back then in 2016. Uh, we also famously in, in our life stories, uh, she flew into New Jersey. I had to pick her up because she had been rerouted from, from Texas 
and the car we were driving broke down on a holiday weekend in in the Poconos, and uh, it was an adventure trying to get back home. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, so went back to the airport, had plenty of time to sit, went into a bar, uh, managed to get an awesome uh, sandwich and some beers, and uh, just chilled out in uh, in in Panama Airport for a while. Uh, and then when uh, uh, my flight finally left, I had plenty of time to relax. All you know, it's the one nice thing is there was no pressure. I was leisurely able to do everything. Uh, that is the convention center in the background. We're going to drive past it. Just letting you know that we just saw it. And, uh, and this is a new sports museum that is the Sports Hall of Fame uh, for all sports in Panama. Uh, and uh, so was very glad to get on the flight. Um, in Costa Rica, I did not have to change planes, so that was super easy. I was really worried about that. The timing was really tight and just so many countries going through. Like it gets exhausting getting on, getting on and off the planes. This is the convention center that we're driving towards right now. And it's quite large. We're going to be driving past it for a while. So pay attention to just how big it is as we go by. Uh, and then flew on to Guatemala, which is always kind of wild. Now, I actually had someone uh, from Australia sitting next to me on the flight, and we were able to talk the whole way. So that flight really went quite quickly. Um, and and it was not a long flight anyway. Uh, but that was, that was nice to have someone uh, who had been in Nicaragua and was telling me about their journey. And uh, we uh, got to Guatemala, um, and I just walked outside, called an Uber, which is always a challenge. I do recommend walking a ways away from the airport. It seems that if you're anywhere near the airport, including at the rotundas in front of it, that people will just cancel on you constantly. Get a little ways away from the airport, and then it won't be a problem. Uh, so once I did that, someone picked me up in about 10 minutes, and there we are past the convention center, uh, and took me to the uh, the Hilton Garden Inn, which I stay at there near the airport. It's just a couple minutes away. And uh, I got checked in, uh, did a little bit of uploaded an episode for you guys, um, did a little bit of editing, caught up on a few things, but wanted to get some sleep for obvious reasons. It was a very long day and I needed to travel the next day. Uh, so, so didn't do too much. Um, thought about ordering food everything in, in town was closed. I could not believe that Guatemala City, being as big as it was, Pedidos Ja had nothing available. When I first got there, there was a few things, everything closed within a few minutes. And so that was discouraging, but I decided I did not need extra food. And so uh, simply called it a night, did my editing and got to bed at a pretty good time and slept pretty soundly. Uh, and then got up uh, this morning, the morning that I'm recording this here in Belize, uh, had um, plenty of time uh, to not really need to rush in the morning because the flight was actually at noon. So I left the hotel about 9.30, uh, got to Aurora Airport. Now going, I have to say, flying out of Aurora is always mayhem. It's so confusing, so oddly done. Um, I'm always glad that I'm there quite a bit early because there's much to go wrong. Finding, just finding the check-in desk for TAG can be a bit challenging. And then they require a lot more information than other places. So not only do they need my reservation for the hotel, they needed to see that I had a place to stay for every day I was going to be in Belize, which was only two days, but I didn't have all the details. I had the reservation confirmation number and information about the hotel, but I didn't have any communications that showed my dates or anything. Um, so luckily I had a whole bunch of other documentation and they were like, okay, we're, we're going to let this go. We feel this is enough for Belize and it was, but Belize has a lot more requirements than other places. So be aware if you're flying into Belize that you will need at the Aurora airport to have a whole bunch of, of stuff. And Guatemala has extra forms that you do when they come in and go out, uh, which just keeps you busy uh, with slow internet connections and trying to get that done. I should mention uh, the paperwork as you enter the country. Um, they've recognized that the system they had last time I did it, which was brand new then, uh, often doesn't work on people's phones and not everyone has phones. They didn't have a way to deal with that. Now they have kiosks where you can do it at a computer and it only takes 30 seconds. Doing it on your phone takes 10 minutes, which is a real problem. And they have a person standing by to assist at the kiosks, which really helps. Uh, so that, that was really good coming in that I was able to do that. Uh, just just things to be aware of. They're they're 
very surmountable issues, but they are things that can catch you off guard when flying through Aurora. There's just a lot more complication there uh, than other places. So worth giving yourself a few more minutes. It's not an airport you want to be running through with no spare time. But uh, no problems. I got to my gate, had plenty of time to kill, went to the Modelo bar and had a couple drinks, had a salmon sandwich, uh, which didn't really need, but I had not had breakfast. So it was nice to get something in me and something relatively healthy. I'm not going to push the point. Um, and, and a couple beers at, at, at 10 o'clock in the morning um, and uh, then got on my flight. Uh, at noon, which is just a little tiny propeller plane uh, that flew us out to Belize City, got in at about one uh, forty-five uh, or so, uh, got picked up by my friend Alex at uh, the airport, uh, went to where I'm recording this, the Best Western Biltmore, which is a really nice hotel, uh, right on the northwest side of uh, Belize City, and... Uh, Boy, just um, as we drive along this highway, the views of downtown Panama City are just so beautiful. The water is so beautiful. The sky is so beautiful. It's it's hard to have a day where Panama City doesn't just take your breath away. It's so, so well situated for the most amazing views. And I wish that I could do a bunch of really amazing time lapses there uh, when different weather rolls through and different times of day. It's 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 a photographer and videographer's dream city uh, to work with for footage, for sure. Uh, and now we're going to pop right into downtown and show you a little bit more of driving along the main waterfront, kind of what we were looking at there. Uh, and uh, uh, so the hotel here is really nice, beautiful facility. I, I did a short or two of it. Uh, and we'll show at, at the end, right as we're, we're done with this video, uh, we'll show my hotel room and, and a little bit of what it's like so you have a little bit of feel. We're hoping... Fingers crossed to actually get out in Belize uh, tomorrow and, and see a bit of stuff that I've not been able to get to before. I say fingers crossed because originally I, did, I had a free day and I don't anymore. I have to work uh, tomorrow and uh, so squeezing things in will be a little bit tough, but we think we're going to be able to pull it off. So hopefully, but uh, uh, we went and got uh, lunch out on the Caribbean, uh, which was very nice. And I actually just got a Beyond Burger, which is so silly, but we can't get Beyond or Impossible Burgers in Nicaragua. And so that is something that I've not had in a really long time. And I just wanted to do something a little bit uh, different from my own taste. And then we ended up going out for dinner uh, tonight, just getting some Chinese. And it was all very good. So I'm going to leave you with shots of the hotel. just want to remind everyone that if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link on the screen, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. And get down in those show notes. Ask questions. Look up any information you need. You need my email. It's all down there in the show notes. I'm very out of communication this week because of all the travel and my daughter's birthday. But shoot me an email. Always give me plenty of time to respond. Don't do anything that's like, hey, I need a response quickly. That is not an option. Always give me a couple weeks to respond. Sorry, it's it, this is not my job. I cannot respond quickly. I just can't. But I do try to respond to everyone and I, I do a pretty good job of it. Uh, but um, anything you need, get down those show notes. It's down there. Leave your comments and questions on the show for sure. Uh, we also have a membership on the show if anyone is interested. Uh, it's $5 a month. We do have a secret uh, uh group where people can ch chat on that. Don Johnson, uh, there's a video on that in the members only thing that explains how to do it. I don't know how to send you a note otherwise to tell you how to do it. I know you're asking me what to do and I don't know how to reach you to tell you in that way. And uh, that's about it. Like and subscribe. Watch another video. That does a ton to help us out. Tell someone about the show. We're hopefully going to be bringing you guys some Belize content in the next couple days. Uh, as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.